Look, I didn't raise this when I spoke to Innes Willocks about wage increases, inflation and the crisis in employment. When employers can't find employees, I suppose we're entitled to be indignant that there are 548,000 unemployed Australians on welfare. But sadly, many of them are unemployable. There must be some sympathy for the incoming government. After all, Labor's only been in power six of the last 22 years. We not only have unconscionable levels of debt, but half a million Australians who are so badly educated, so badly trained, so lacking in discipline, lacking in commitment, drowning from an entitlement mentality, they're most probably unemployable. What is equally disturbing is that before entering government, Labor promised 53 reviews, round tables and inquiries, 18 new public service officers, agencies and expert panels, none of which will ever be abolished, but they'll certainly spend money. Which brings me to ask again, where does the aged care workforce fit into all of this? What was once a crisis is now a calamity. Last year, the Committee for Economic Development of Australia, CEDA, warned that there was an aged care labour shortage of 17,000 just to meet basic standards of care. They are now warning that labour shortage is disturbingly doubled. This is not an easy crisis to solve. There is a Minister for Aged Care, the 37-year-old Queensland member for the seat of Lilly, who's been in the parliament for only three years, Arnica Wells. Today, she said the obvious, that aged care needs, quote, urgent reform as quickly as possible, unquote. But has she spoken to the Treasurer, Jim Chalmers? She'll need money. The majority of providers are operating at a loss. She's right when she said today, quote, every rock I turn over, it is worse than we thought. And I think that is the experience across the board. The situation is in crisis, unquote. She said she'll be looking at the forecast funding shortfall. Minister, you have it. The Royal Commission, which two years ago warned that at the low end of what's needed, an extra 3.5 billion a year will have to be found. This is where we're entitled to be angry, as I was at the time, of $80 billion being spent on JobKeeper for many people who shouldn't have been put out of work in the first place, let alone the person on casual pay of $400 a week who suddenly found himself on $750. This is why aged care goes without. The Aged Care Royal Commission found that neither the Commonwealth Department of Health nor the aged care regulator had any specific plan for the aged care sector. Now, all governments mouth cliches about dignity in old age. Every aged care facility to be accredited is expected to have infection controls in place. But hundreds of aged care Australians died in aged care as a result of coronavirus. And the Royal Commission found that across the aged care sector, there have been failures in clinical care and infection control, which failures have resulted in hundreds of deaths. Yet residents pay a small fortune for a place in an aged care facility. The Albanese government has promised 24-7 on-site nurses, more care hours per resident, and to fund a pay rise for aged care workers. None of that's happened. But one can only wonder what kind of care these 200,000 residents in almost 3,000 aged care homes are receiving.